Here's a couple of uh, divisibility problems, uh, pretty basic in terms of just using the definition of visibility, but general, uh, proving little tiny theorems, what a mathematician might call a lemma, a little mini theorem. So first is if you have four integers, we'll call them A, B, C, and D, uh, and we're assuming that A divides B and C divides D, then we want to show that A times C divides B times D. Okay, so classic example of uh, make things more explicit, and unpack a definition or a notation at the start. Uh, so we know that there are two more integers. Let's say k and l, make them explicit by naming them, such that a b equals ka and d equals lc. That's exactly what divisibility means, is there's some, uh, that b is some multiple of a and d is multiple of c, okay? Therefore, okay, well, let's see. What can we say about BD there? So classic example of combining logic and algebra. We used a little logic to unpack a definition. Um, and we, well, we assumed the if part and we unpacked that and made it more explicit. And that gave us some equations to work with. And then we manipulate the equations. Not how every proof goes, but definitely how lots of simple proofs go. Okay, so uh, BD is therefore, well, let me be, a little excruciatingly explicit here. It's Ka times Lc, but of course, addition, uh, multiplication is commutative and associative, so we can regroup that as Kl times Ac. Hey, guess what? And uh, Kl is an integer. We know that when we multiply two integers, we get another integer. And we've written down the definition of Bd being divisible by Ac because we've exhibited BD as some integer times AC. Uh, so that means that AC divides BD. Doesn't matter that the that integer came to us in a slightly complicated way as something other than one letter. We could invent a new letter to represent it, but there's absolutely no need. It's just uh, the definition is that if you can exhibit this kind of equation where one quantity is something known to be an integer, however you got it, times the other quantity, then the first is divisible by the second. BD is divisible by AC, or in other words, AC divides into BD. And that's it. That is, that's, that's as simple as it gets, pretty much. But um, it's a nice example of not being afraid of the letters in particular. OK, next one, another book problem. Let M be a non-zero integer. OK, we'll probably use that non-zero in here somewhere. And let A and B be any integer, so they could be 0. Prove that A divides B if and only if ma divides mb. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this one is that if and only if, that's a biconditional or bidirectional implication. Um, very often you need to prove two things there. Sometimes you can do it all in one fell swoop, but very often you need to show that, um, in this case, we're going to need to show that if a, imply, a divides b, then ma divides mb, and if M A divides M B, then A divides B. Okay, so we really need to show both of those those things. Okay, so first of all, um, let's show that A divides B. That if the first, then M A divides M B. Okay. Um, Okay, so that's going to be half of it. Well, that's the easy half. Okay, just like in the in the previous one, we know that b equals uh, well that I'm going to make the logic clear. There is some integer k with uh, b equals ka. Okay, and then what do we know? We know that m b equals m times the quantity ka. I'm just going to move that k out, again, using commutativity and associativity, big time. So, OK, mb has, is now uh, visibly a multiple of ma. It's exactly the same multiple, as it turns out, which is not super shocking if you put in explicit numbers here. Um, this doesn't violate anybody's intuition, I think. Um, so, in other words, mb or ma divides mb. OK. All right, so then, uh, and notice we didn't use that m was non-zero, because if m was zero, we would just get zero and zero. And one of the 
kind of funky little special cases is that zero does divide zero um, in using this definition. That doesn't mean we can figure out zero divided by zero because that would mean picking out one of the, the numbers and that's what you can't do. Turns out to work though. Anyway, we haven't used m equals zero yet. Okay, so next we show uh, that if m a divides m b and m is not equal to zero, then uh, then a actually must divide b. Okay, so that's interesting. All right, so uh, okay, so let's see. So assume that m a divides m b. Okay, we know what exactly what the if and the then are, so we assume the if. Okay, um, and of course, and that m is not equal to zero. Okay, here let's let's ju just think for a second, real quick. Why do we need that here? If I, if M A is known to divide M B, but M is secretly zero, again, it just says zero divides into zero. It says nothing whatsoever about A and B. Zero tends to destroy information. And so um, there's that is a completely vacuous statement and has nothing to do with what A and B are in particular. So this is something where we absolutely need M not to be zero. Okay, so what do we know? There is some K with, okay, let's see. So that's gonna say that, um, that MB equals K times MA. Okay, so now this one's a little trickier. Let me put everything on one side, especially when we're thinking about zeros or non-zeros. Uh, that's where we wanna, we might need to use some property where zero is special. So I'm gonna put everything on one side, MB minus KMA equals zero, okay? And then M uh, times B minus KA, is equal to zero. One thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying, even though this is about divisibility, I'm really trying to avoid actually dividing anything because you really can often get away with not talking about division, the the operation, and really just focusing on properties of multiplication. And it's really cleaner to do that. And also, um, it, it's more careful in terms of things like zero, which is what exactly what this one's about. Okay, so now what we have is the product of m and b minus ka is equal to zero. Okay, now we use the zero product property, big time. Okay, um, so either m equals zero, if I just gave you that equation, nothing else, or b minus ka equals zero, that's what I would conclude. But we, this is where we use, we've excluded the possibility that m is equal to zero, and so B minus KA equals zero. And then put that on the other side. Hey, B equals KA, or in other words, A divides into B. Okay. And we're done. And uh, you might have thought, well, this is silly. Hey, at, at this stage right up here, just divide both sides by M. And that's, that's totally legal. But remember, we're trying to be really careful to stay two things. We want to be really careful about zero being special and not try to divide by zero. Well, here we could say, hey, we know that m is not equal to zero, so dividing both sides of an equation by a variable, which is in general is a really dangerous thing to do, uh, is okay here precisely because they have assumed that variable is not zero. So you could do that. The other thing, though, is that when we're dealing with number theory and especially trying to make statements about integers, um, if you divide, you might actually accidentally go into rational numbers and not even know it. And um, and get statements like, ooh, three is divisible by two because two times this number is equal to three, but that number is a rational number, it's three halves. So I try to do this only staying within addition, subtraction, and multiplication, um, and then using this very important property for multiplication. So that might seem pedantic, but this is really the right way to be careful about these statements. I noticed last year, uh, teaching this course, that a lot of people divided uh, stuff and, and brought in rational arithmetic where a much care, more careful way uh, would be to really just stay with integers and try to never even believe the rational numbers even exist. Okay.